So I have the unique luck of following a legend uh, speaker, and so hopefully whatever I say, you will feel like it's from the future, and you're still glowing from the previous talk. <laughs> um, so in this talk, I just want to talk to you about the research that we're doing at the Graduate School of Education at Harvard, in which uh, basically we build systems which can help students to learn together, and then we study exactly how these students are impacting, uh, how these systems are impacting the students uh, in terms of how they're learning and how they're communicating and how they feel about things. So I'm going to start off by uh, just giving you a sense of the context that we work in. So we work in maker spaces, which are these um, communal collaborative spaces where basically people are coming together, they have access to a lot of different tools, um, but it's basically people coming together with the purpose of building things that they're passionate or interested in. Um, and as you can see, it's people working together with the materials that they have around them. There's, not, uh, there's no direct instruction, so there's no teacher there guiding people. Uh, people are kind of doing their own thing and collaborating with each other in order to solve problems that they solve. Um, some of the issues that come up in spaces like this is that uh, you can build things that basically function with, uh, with physical phenomena, but those physical phenomena are invisible. So on the top right, you have a picture of a working speaker. So it turns out that if you take a bunch of uh, like a wire and connect it to your smartphone and you play music through it, if that wire is a certain type of wire and it's coiled, it will generate a magnetic field. And with that magnetic field, if you have a real magnet attached to it, you can move that and so vibrate the air in, in order to generate sound. Um, but you can't really see that by, looking, by just looking at it. And on the bottom right, it's a circuit that's basically doing something and it's got buttons and it's got LEDs and it's got uh, chips that are programmed with specific things. But you can see that just by looking at it, you don't really understand what's going on inside of it. And so if you are having a, a problem with any of these, it's difficult to figure out how to fix it, but also if you're in the process of kind of exploring and building these things because maybe you found them on the internet and, or you wanted one of these at home, you don't really understand what's going on inside of them because you can't see the physical phenomena that are actually happening. So in our lab, we, we build systems um, in which we allow people to use augmented reality, so in this case we use uh, Microsoft HoloLens, to be able to look at physical objects and then also see extra information about the objects that they're looking at. And then we study how these people are learning. So I'll just give you some examples of the things we built. So in this case, it's the ability of visualizing uh, what's going on inside of uh, electrical sensors. So we basically have the ability to associate these graphical representations to physical objects such as that magnetic field sensor over there. And once it's associated, you can just basically interact with that object and you can see what that sensor is picking up. And so you can really easily just look at the objects and understand the information that you're seeing. Uh, in this other case, you have uh, a com more complicated electronic circuit and you can basically have multiple visualizations that are di showing different parts of it. In this case, this graph on the left is showing voltage versus current, which there's a relationship in physics in that if you change the resistance, the proportion between those two variables is changing. And so you can see that by having those visualizations, you can learn more about what you're doing. And as you're watching the next few videos, I just want you to pay attention to two things. One is what kind of information is being visualized with the augmented reality system? And then the second thing is, at what point in space and at what point in time is that information being presented? Because I want you to start thinking about augmented reality as a method for a mechanism for providing people with information that they need. Um, so this is an example where we took a physical robot, such as the one you see on the left, on the left there, it's not augmented. It's basically got wheels and it's got a bunch of sensors that are sensing different things. And on the right side, it's a view of it uh, visible from the augmented reality headset in which you can see the different graphs, what it's sensing and what the purpose, purpose of the sensors is. Um, and so when students are working with this, this is a view in which on the left side is a view from the HoloLens as the person is looking at the robot and on the right side it's, it's the person programming the robot. And so you can see they're making a program, that a program that involves two sensors, like sensor three and sensor two. And on the left side, you can see that the program is being physically associated to parts of the, uh, parts of the robot. And as the person is moving the robot around, they can see how the program is tied to it, but also what the sensors are currently picking up. And they can also say voice commands, which change the program so that the robot reacts to the physical space that it's in. 
And then once they're done, they, they can basically just watch the robots move around. And in real time, they can look at the object and understand what's going on inside of that object and how will that information influence the object's behavior. So we're basically providing people with extra information about what is inside of that object so that they don't have to go back to a computer, think in computer space, and then go back in looking at the robot in physical space. So they can basically just look at that object and think with it. And then the last video that I want to show you is this system, which is basically a speaker. So this is just like another version of a speaker in which on the right side here, I have there's a cup and it's going to vibrate when electricity is put in through the wires over there. And if you just play with this as a physical system, it works. You can hear it. You can watch. You can feel the cup vibrating. Um, but it's kind of hard to understand what's going on inside of it. So what we did is we added augmentations that basically show electricity flowing, magnetic fields, uh, and basically how the system is operating. Uh, one thing about this video is that the virtual visualizations are a bit misaligned because of the way it's been recorded from the HoloLens, uh, but in the real system, everything is lined up to the physical objects. So this is what a person would see. They basically see um, magnetic fields overlaid onto the, the, the place where there's magnetic fields. Uh, they can see the flow of electricity through this whole system and the direction of electricity. And they can also interact with it. So as the system is running, you can do physical manipulations such as changing the, the distance between the cup and where the coil of wire is, and you can see the effects. You can also push buttons in order to change the direction of electricity, or you can play real music with it. And then you see these visualizations of audio waves. You can see electricity flowing through different parts of the system. Uh, you can see the magnetic fields. And the hope is that by providing students with the ability to see these invisible phenomena that are always there, but they just ha haven't been able to see them, uh, by being able to see this, that might change the way people are learning. And so you can see that the system is actually physically moving around uh, as the person is pushing buttons. And so we basically build this, we build these, and then we evaluate uh, what happens to people's behaviors. How does it change? And so the way we do it is we do these very controlled studies in which we take a large group of people and we separate them into some groups of people experience the non-augmented reality version of this, and some groups of people experience the augmented reality version of this. And by comparing the behaviors between these two different sets of people, we can see exactly how is it that they're learning that is being influenced by augmented reality? So the presence of the augmented reality, what is it specifically influencing in how people are learning? Uh, so we basically get, oops, uh, so we get pairs of people to interact with this, and I, that's going to be important because we're interested in collaborative learning. The kinds of things we find are generally, this is sort of what's been found in general with augmented reality education literature, is that people are much more efficient when they use augmented reality, so they finish the task faster. They also learn about something, so you can see the, the red is with augmented reality and the blue is without augmented reality. Uh, and you can see that, for example, for learning some things, like the shapes of magnetic fields, people learn better because they can see the three-dimensional information. Uh, they can also understand better the relationships between the different components, and that allows them to take the information and transfer it to different contexts. So when we ask people questions about something that is not a speaker, but it involves the same phenomena, they can answer much better when they've had augmented reality. Um, so for some things, it's good, but we're finding that for some things, it's actually not good. So you can see here the people's understanding of the relationship between magnetic fields and how magnetic fields are influencing the movement of the cup uh, or the speaker vibrate, my, sorry, speaker membrane, is actually worse in augmented reality than non-augmented reality. And that's because when people are in augmented reality, they focus a lot on the visual representations and they don't spend so much time feeling things. And so if you ask them uh, things that are kinesthetic, they actually answer worse with augmented reality. And at the same time, they also don't spend so much time playing with other components of the system. Uh, so for example, understanding how an amplifier works, they, they understand it less. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this, but it's basically indicating that augmented reality is good for some things, but not good for other things. Um, we also measure people's attitudes, and like we've seen in previous presentations, 
uh, people get super excited about augmented reality. Um, and so we see that when they're wearing augmented reality, they'll f they feel much more focused, they're much more interested, uh, they feel like the experience is, uh, is much more pleasurable and they wanna keep engaging. However, we looked more deeply at these results and it turns out that basically just the presence of having something on your head and seeing a little bit of uh, visualizations, that is the thing that motivates people a lot. So even if they don't see magnetic fields, they don't see electricity, but they just see like a little bit of labels in 3D, they are like, oh my God, this is the future. I feel so excited. I just want to keep on exploring with this. And so by just wearing a headset, there's a strong novelty effect that's making people really excited about engaging with this, which, might, which doesn't actually relate to how much they're learning. People are just kind of um, affected by the novelty of the experience. Okay, so some of the things, some of, some of the other things we're finding, uh, we're basically trying to understand why are these effects happening? So why are people learning better? Um, and how are they communicating with each other? And how does this, uh, this kind of ex uh, application influence the, the, the actual process that's going on? And so we looked at, for example, how are people spending their time? And so on this bottom, bottom chart here, you can see how people are spending their time in augmented reality versus in the top chart, it's the, in the non-augmented reality condition. So you can see that in AR condition, people spend, this red part is how much time they're spending just focusing and communicating about the system itself. Um, and it turns out that for doing this task with AR, people focus a lot of their time on just what they see in augmented reality. When they don't have augmented reality, people play with the physical system, but then they also look around. There's, we have posters of information in the room. We also have other tools like understanding how a compass works and measuring things with a compass. So people who have augmented reality, they are sort of tunnel visioned, like super focused on what's going on in there, uh, and they don't pay attention to the other things in their physical space. And that's potentially a drawback because it might be that in the physical space, there's physical things that could be helpful for, for their learning process, but people are very focused on what the visuals are and they just get hyper-focused on that. And that also makes them less likely to physically interact with some of the, the pieces. So they're just kind of focused on the visuals and they spend a lot of their time on that. And so it's important to design augmented reality experiences with features that basically bring people's attention to physical objects in their space so that they're kind of pulled out of the AR experience and made to focus on other things that might be helpful for them in the physical space. Um, it's also really interesting to think about, so with this kind of experience, there's a lot of information and visualization and representation that is presented to people through augmented reality. And so there is a question about, if this information is removed, will people still be able to do these tasks? And so it's really important to think about how to present this information so that novices feel like they can engage in these tasks, but then also think about how to remove this augmented information so that people can walk to other situations and, and basically do the same tasks. Uh, and then we also see other interesting things in terms of how people collaborate. So in situations where one person knows more than the other person, we find that with augmented reality, they, both people are kind of equally participating and contributing to the problem solving process. Uh, while without augmented reality, we can see that when one person knows more, they know more and they kind of solve the problem on their own, while the other person is just not making that many contributions. And we think the reason why is because of how people use information. Uh, so basically, we, th we are thinking about the, inform the representations and the information that is conveyed in the augmented reality. So augmented reality are experiences where you have these visualizations, and the visualizations are giving people information. And so we looked at how are people communicating and what kind of gestures they're doing, and it turns out that in augmented reality, this big yellow, uh, yellow part of the bar chart is pointing gestures. So it turns out that in augmented reality, people talk by doing a lot of pointing at things. Um, they, while in non-augmented reality, they point a little bit, but then they also do gestures with their hands to try to communicate, and they also spend a lot of time generating information on paper. 
Um, and so this is kind of telling us that with augmented reality, people use all of the information that's provided to them and they rely on that in order to communicate. And that can balance the interaction so that when somebody doesn't actually know a lot about what's going on, they can just say, hey, what's that? And why is that doing whatever it's doing? So it's more easy for people to communicate because all of the information is available and they can just point and use that information to help balance their communication. Um, but at this, so it's important because of that reason to design features that enable people to collaborate with these kind of experiences. So when people have collaboration features like being able to point at things, being able to highlight things, being able to leave marks on things, that can help people to collaborate around this virtual content. Um, and then it's also important to design features where people can generate some of these representations so that they're not just relying on what they see, but they actually have to create information also. Um, so in summary, basically there's educational benefits that we observed. So people have a lot of improved focus and improved excitement in these experiences and also improved perception of themselves. So they actually feel like they are the kind of person who does well in physics. We have those kind of quotes from people who have experienced the augmented reality system. So they basically feel like they're more easily engaged. Um, but there's strong novelty effects. So some of this might just be due to the, the fact that there's a headset on them. Um, there's learning effects. Specifically, people um, learn better about spatial information, understanding relationships between things, being able to transfer information to different domains. Uh, but there's also a tunnel vision effect where people are learning about some things really good, but they're ignoring other things. Um, and then we also notice that people's collaboration is more balanced, so they can communicate more easily, uh, they can problem solve more easily. The people who are natural leaders will often sort of tone down their dominance. Uh, so that makes for more efficient teaching. And I just wanted to leave you with some components to consider. So whenever we design augmented reality experiences, these are not just black boxes that you, know, you throw a bunch of users in there and then they work. It's really important to understand what specifically about the augmented reality experience is causing the effects. Um, so in augmented reality experience, people are gonna experience novelty. So the technology is novel, and so if you see people being excited, you really have to take that with a grain of salt and try to understand are they excited because they can see more things or are they excited just because it's something new? Um, they also have information being given to them that is less than previously. So if you have before when this robot wasn't augmented, people actually didn't see that, that information so easily. And so their access to the information, um, basically their information that's being given to them is different, but also how that information is lined up with the physical space and also at what time it's presented, it's important. So it's important to really consider what kind of information is being given to people? Do people need to know that right now and right in this space? And also, could this information be given in a simpler way? So for example, with this, with this robot, it's just bar charts. Could they just be little displays that are on the physical object? And that would make everything easier because people didn't have to wear headsets. Um, and then there's other things that, that these AR uh, experiences basically allow. So these representations basically allow people to communicate much more easily, to ground their co collaboration. Um, and also they allow people to interact. So these experiences allow people to interact with these visual representations and it's important to understand, do you want people to interact? Is that important for people to, s to interact and do all of this? Or do you want people to, to be more focused and not allow them to, to explore certain things? So all of these different components are important things to consider when designing these kind of experiences. Um, thank you very much. If you wanna keep in touch with me, that's me. There's a lot of different people that have contributed to these, uh, and so I really wanted to acknowledge them. Feel free to re uh, send me an email. Thank you. Thank you.